Hey everybody, uh, let's dive into contract reform and training video for daily logs. Uh, daily logs contain a lot of information, or I should say they can contain a lot of information. Some people uh, don't do daily logs because they think, oh, it just takes too long to fill out. Uh, that's too much information. It's going to take a half hour every day to do a daily log. Daily logs don't take a half hour. They should take you a little over maybe five minutes. Ours are very automated. But my main point here is I don't care if a job is three days long or three years long. You should do a daily log on every single job that you do every single day that you're on that job. Even if you're not on the job, do a daily log and just say not on job today. These are documents, they're actually legal documents that you never need to pull one up necessarily from a week ago. Um, when, when you have to pull up old daily logs, it's when something's gone wrong and there's a problem, you know, windows started leaking or somebody said they were hurt on a job um, from a year ago, year and a half ago. These things do happen and these are your record to state what got done um, every day on the job and document it with photos, uh, et cetera. So uh, I'll get off my soapbox on the importance of daily logs, um, and let's uh, go ahead and dive on in. I'll, I'll point out how easy they are to do, and, and again, the, the importance of the daily logs. In uh, Contractor Foreman, you have your daily log dashboard, and I'll show you where daily logs are in the main menu. There. And so you can see we have all these different widgets. You don't always have to pull up a daily log. Maybe you're the owner or project managers, a project manager of multiple jobs, and you just need to see kind of a brief glance of what's been going on. So we do have all these different widgets. But to start with up here in the upper left corner, I've got a search field right here. So if I just need to search for something in a daily log, alphanumeric search, type in partial name or something, can't quite remember it, not sure what I'm looking for, find stuff pretty easy that way. We have a very handy filter button here, used a lot in daily logs because we can pull now by date range, look at all my daily logs for a date range, or just by a certain project and a date range, or who created the daily log or the record status of active, uh, all, or archived. Uh, once you do fill that out, uh, it is going to put a little gear button up here. And many times somebody will say, oh, I can't find my daily logs, they disappeared. And it's because of maybe somebody came in and did uh, this. So I ran a filter for projects and I went apply. And now all my daily logs have disappeared over here in my list view. And you just have to look here, see that, see that gear button? So I'm gonna click there again, and I'm going to reset it. That cleared my field, and everything's back the way it needs to be. Easy one to forget, you set a filter there. Got a calendar view, so I can just look in a calendar view and see all the days that I, I did a daily log. Um, got it by different months, uh, et cetera. Click the back button here to go back. And then that's to get where we are now, our dashboard. Just quickly to go through these widgets. I uh, just got weather kind of for, for the next hour. That's at your, your office home location. So now daily logs uh, with weather delays on them, reports with schedule delays, recent inspections, incidences. So you can see we have all these very handy uh, widgets here. And when you combine that with a filter, it'll distill down to just the information that you need very quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the right side, top right side of the screen here. This is just the video icon. Maybe that's how you got to this video, but you can get to them various ways. So every module has a uh, video icon there to watch a training video. Here is a make a suggestion. We love to hear from our customers. And so if you think, oh, I wish daily logs would do this, or I wish it had that feature, just hit that hit that icon with the light bulb. Give us a little summary. Give us a good write-up detail to what you want. This goes into the main database. Other users can, can comment on your suggestion, vote on your suggestion, uh, et cetera. Then we have the gear button here. The gear button, this is for your settings for daily logs. Um, 
So I'm going to just click that real quick. A lot of things you can do here. We won't go through every single setting and turn this into a three hour uh, video. Uh, but you can see they're broken up by kind of section here. So if I'm going to open up that top section because I want to rename that, maybe I call instead of calling them daily logs, I call them daily reports. So you can change every module in Contractor Form and has this functionality, and you can simply name things what you want them named, and it doesn't just change it in the main menu. It'll change it everywhere in Contractor Form and that references that daily log. So if I said daily report here, it would change it everywhere in Contractor Form and to say daily report. So this makes it just much faster than going back to our main setting page, trying to find where we kind of hid something and what was our thinking of where it should go. This is just a direct shot right into settings for that module. Between the gear button and the training video, pretty easy to get going on the modules, understand how they work, uh, et cetera. That said, let's jump in and open up a daily log. And all in all, data logs are very straightforward. Um, you know, when I say they don't take that long to fill out, it's because so much of it is auto-filled for you. I'm going to go ahead and unlock the uh, daily log there. And you can see the tabs across the top. We're going to start off in details. And details, just, just kind of that. So project, arrival date. This has nothing to do with time cards. We're going to get into how time cards feed into contractor performance daily logs here in a minute. But this is just, you know, what's the date of the daily log? You know, when did everybody basically show up? When did everybody leave? Uh, site conditions, condition notes. So you can see all the standard fields uh, that we have here. It's going to automatically pull in the weather um, based, on, um, based on zip code, address, et cetera. You got weather notes. And things like weather delays. If I had a weather delay, I'm going to click yes. Now it's going to give me a little note field there to fill in what, what the delay was, how bad it was, any, any other comments. But again, it doesn't show that unless I need it just to save screen real estate. Uh, any schedule delays. So I had said yes here. Schedule delay. Electricians do not bring trencher, uh, etc. Moving down here. Incidents and accidents. Now, remember, things populate into contractor foreman. So if we had an incident, if we'd filled out an incident that day, that is going to automatically fill into our daily log. We don't have to take the time to, to click upload or, or merge or anything like that. It's just going to be there along with a ton of other information, which makes it, again, like I say, very quick and easy to do good daily logs. Let me scroll back up a bit here and jump into the tabs. So in the people tab here, we've got people on site. This is just for some manual data ent or entry if you need it. So employee work notes, small crew today, just some notes about what everybody did. And employees on site. I can manually add them, but I don't really need to. Because down here we have employee time cards, which I'll get into in a minute as we kind of work our way down the page. You know, if you had visitors on the site here, you know, architect brought uh, people out to the site. I meant to be, should have said class, not calls there. Just notice that little typo. <laughs> Now we can assign subs. These don't have to be just your subs. Anybody that was on the site that day, you want to log at least a little bit of information about who was there. So when we click assign sub, you're going to bring in, very simple to do. I just click, brings me up contractors. I can pick whomever. Uh, but I just select who was there. Say number of employees, how many hours were they were there. It automatically calculates your man hours and some notes about what they did. Again, remember, you might need this a year and a half from now. Your, your brain cannot remember what happened uh, 10 o'clock uh, on Wednesday, uh, exactly a year and a half ago. Employee time cards. When somebody's filling out their time card and they were on this job, it's going to automatically pull them into your daily log for that day. And what it does, it does it in a lot of detail because you can see here, Scott Carley is listed three times in one day for work he did on the job. And that's because it's all a separate cost code. 
So Scott said he was working on selective demolition. Then he said he was doing uh, architectural woodwork, and then he was doing miscellaneous framing. So it breaks it out for us. So again, we can go back and see what was this person doing um, during that day. And you can also track contractor time. Not a big fan of that myself, but uh, if you do have a reason or a need to track your contractor's time, you can assign them um, the ability to use the time cards in contractor foreman. Move up to the top again. Material tab. Again, you can do a, a lot here. You don't, like I say, you don't always have to fill all of this out, especially if it's a, it is that two or three day job. So you're not going to have tons of deliveries, multiple pieces of equipment coming on the job. So it just takes a second to do this. I could just maybe fill out material notes, say. And a little tip here, we do do the uh, talk to text. So out in the field on the on the uh, phone apps, just simply tap in the field, hit the microphone, talk in your material notes, and it'll convert it over to text for you. Material items delivered. Now, what's handy about this is, remember, I keep saying over and over, but contractor foreman is very automated. It's all tied together. It knows where to send information next for you, so you're not having to do it manually. But in our material items delivered, what I can do is I can select from purchase orders and materials that were on purchase orders. So I can say, well, I got some drywall delivered here. And there it is down there. And how much did I get delivered? Was there any back ordered? How much did I use? And again, a note field. And what that's doing when I type in how much was delivered. So I had ordered 45. I guess sheets, so 45. So if I got 20 delivered, because don't always get a full delivery, what it does is it talks to the purchase order because I created a purchase order for my sheet rock, probably miscellaneous other sundries, et cetera, on that purchase order. But for the line item on the purchase order, it's going to put in that, hey, we got 20 delivered. And that way people in accounting know to not pay for all 45 because we only got 20. So you're not going to overpay. Still pay the full thing if you wanted. Just giving everybody a heads up that we only got the 20. Material items used. So again, just adding the plus button and select my materials. What I use, as you can see, I brought in ceramic wall tile, description, etc. Again, it's it's more of a kind of a, a just a click and select click and select uh, to fill fill out these portions of the daily log. The equipment really works about the same way as material, very similar. Equipment notes we've got equipment used. We do job cost our equipment. So I can say was it from a change order cost item database or just bring in all say cost item database. Select what equipment it was, bring that in, and I've got my high lift delivered, or I should say used. Then items delivered, equipment, equipment items delivered. So I said we got an 8-inch trencher, who delivered it, and two important little check boxes here. Was it returned? So a rent, piece of rental equipment or show until returned. If I click this next time I do a daily log, it's just going to leave that on there because I'm using it for numerous days. There's no point in every single day having to go add the eight inch trencher. All my equipment that's just going to be on the job um, until I say it was returned will just auto populate every single day. Equipment logs. As somebody fills out an equipment log, which we do have equipment logs over here. So if somebody's using the piece of equipment, they should be responsible for filling out the daily log. And then that will automatically feed back down into our daily log. Our note field brings in a lot of information. But again, this is all basically automatic, automated, because if I fill out a project note, Again, there's a men, main menu item for project node, inspections, and, and meetings. So there's my note field. 
there's my inspection field, and there's my safety meetings. So as whoever's in charge of safety meeting fills out, a, does holds a safety meeting for that day on that job, it's going to automatically populate as uh, have a job site inspection. So MEP before closing in the walls so we can see that it passed. But I can also add new. So I can just quickly add new note, add new inspection, add new safety meeting. They don't have to come up here and go to my main menu, select, start filling everything out so as i click there it'll start a new one and automatically populate it for that job because it knows that's uh, where it's coming from the files here's where you're going to load up those progress photos so on the phone apps you're just going to hit add and click your camera button and it'll load up your progress photos i always say take photos at the very start of the day take photos around lunch take photos right before you leave the job that should be the last thing you do at the end of the day um, as you're leaving the job just walk around and, and take some pictures of, of how you left the job that day then we have our custom fields here you may have a need for fields that we don't include, and you can create them very, very easily here. Um, again, you can do that by clicking on the uh, gear button, the module setting button up here, the icon, and that's where you can create those fields. Very easy to do. It's, it's going to take you 10 minutes to learn how to create custom fields. And if you need further information, we do have videos under forms and checklists, which is really what you're doing down here so you could watch a video on forms and checklists which shows you how to create and modify those fields to work best they can for you i'm going to go ahead and save this i've got a refresh button here because remember it's pulling in information from all sorts of different places in contractor foreman so maybe as I come into a daily log, I want to hit that refresh button so I make sure that I see the latest. That, of course, is the uh, button to unlock or save, edit. And here we have the three-dot menu item. Most videos, you'll hear me harp a lot about the three-dot menu item. Always look to that three-dot menu item. That's where more automation is. I kind of jokingly say these are where the magic kind of happens. Um, not a lot in the daily logs, though, because it's kind of built into the daily log itself. But view email PDF, I can make a copy. So boom, coming in the next day, I'm just going to go to yesterday's daily log, go make a copy, make some basic changes, and I got my daily log except for adding in uh, maybe my progress photos. So that's what I'm saying. Don't be intimidated by daily logs. Once you get used to them, you'll see that they really do take about five minutes um, to do. Down at the very bottom here, Got this is basically the same as up top as a three dot menu item. And over here, every screen has this timeline button. And so you can kind of get a good idea of who did what when on, say, a daily log or any other record. Didn't have a lot of action here because it was just me kind of modifying it here and there. But uh, other, other records in contractor form and show a lot more detail in those. So let's jump back to the dashboard. And I hope that helped, folks. Uh, let us know. Got any suggestions on the video or suggestions for us at all? We'd love to hear from uh, love to hear from our customers and our users. So I appreciate it. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.